What's up, people? It's Dice here. So you've decided to lose your sanity and play Elden Ring. Just kidding. It's 2024, or whatever year you're watching this in. This is a noob's introduction to Elden Ring. If you've never played a Soulsborne game before, or you were like me and given them a try in the past, my first experience was with Dark Souls 1. And to me, it feels like Elden Ring is a bit more streamlined and positioned to welcome new players. With that being said, the first thing to know is this game will challenge you. So you might want to go at it with a friend or two. If no one wants to face this challenge with you, that's okay, don't worry. There are a few players you can team up with via the summoning. Basically, what summoning is, you're able to use this item, the Fur Calling Finger Remedy, that you can craft or buy from the stores to bring other players into your world. If you wanna bring friends only, you're going to need to put a password on. Now, in order for either one of you to go into each other's games, you're gonna to need to put down the Tarnished Furled Finger. Now, don't worry about looking for this one, you will automatically get it. Just make your way down to the multiplayer option and it will be there. Now, this game only allows you to have two other people in your game. That is the max. So if you have three friends, you're gonna have to cut one of them. No, but seriously, I wish it was three in total and it would be a four player game, but it's not, unfortunately. It is only three players you can have in a game at one time. I'm sure there's a reason why they've done that. There's kind of a reason they do everything in this game. So take it for what it is. Runes, runes are the currency of the game. They can be plentiful or they can be stingy depending on where you are in the game. After update 1.10, a few things have changed. Some past ways to cheese the game, as they say, no longer work. When looking at a guy, take it with a grain of salt and always look at the date especially for boss fights. The best places to get runes in this game are Mogwin's Palace. There is a ball location you can go to to get early on runes, which is at Lenny's Rise. And there is also the location at the Dragon Burrow's Fork, which if you're strong enough, you can easily get between 20 to 50,000 runes each go. Unless you go get to Mogwin's Palace by talking to White Mask Vari early on in the game. Now, by doing it this way, just remember, he will invade you a couple times. So, you're probably wondering, runes? Runes is your currency. Now, don't be confused with runes, as in the structures, or great runes, the items you get, or rune arc, which those two things complement each other. But of course, more on those things later on. Runes, the currency, are souls you get from killing enemies and bosses. So let's say you've been playing for a while now. You've got all these runes. What do you do with them? Well, you put them on your stats. Of course, but what stats exactly? There's something you must know about runes. You should be spending them wisely on your stats when you level up and you should know your build in advance. If you do not know your build, there's plenty of videos out there where you can look up and find the perfect build for you. My build is currently a warrior that uses a little bit of magic. So I put my stats more into endurance, dexterity, and strength, as well as vigor. Okay, I'm gonna break down the definition of all these things. So it will quickly help you understand where to put these well-earned runes. There's, play yeah, like I said, Lenny's Rise was like the first place you probably will wanna go to when you're weak to get some easy runes because all you have to do is, is get this ball to roll off and you're good okay so from there you just go to any side of grace and you should be able to level up on your own right given you have enough runes so basically what i'm going to do now is i'm going to kind of break down what what everything is so the first thing we start with is vigor vigor is your health so the more you put that up the higher your health bar is some people's health bars are basically the size of the screen Mine is about, at this point, and I'm on New Game Plus, it's about halfway. Because I've reached a part where I have enough health, and I could upgrade it if I wanted to, but I'm kind of okay with where it is now. Mind is how much magic you can output, depending on how much magic your weapon uses, or depending on how much FP your, your weapon uses, you can have a super long bar or a short bar, it all depends on how much FP it actually uses and how many flasks you have on hand. Endurance, endurance is how much you can, you can carry or maximum load. 
It also will help when you are trying to uh, dodge quickly. So if you have enough endurance, you can dodge very quickly with a lot of heavy equipment. That means you can put on heavy armor and don't have to worry about your vigor. Well, not as much, of course, but don't let these monsters catch you slipping. Uh, strength is the like, can you hold this weapon, basically? So the bigger weapons you see in the game is all based on strength. So you need a lot of strength to hold these these type of weapons. It's a little similar to dexterity. Dexterity is about the same. Like, you, you need dexterity to be able to hold certain type of weapons as well. It's kind of your, your robustness and your stats will go up depending on, like, your defense stats will go up depending on what you pull, put up. So intelligence and faith are more of your magic stuff. So those will, you'll need to put those up if you want to use certain type of spells. So if you're wondering, oh, why can't I use this spell or why can't I use the staff? Your intelligence is not up, especially for staffs and your faith isn't up. So you need to put more into those. If you're doing like a combination build, I would say do a little, little bit of intelligence and then do a little bit of faith. You guys probably don't even have to do intelligence if you're doing more of a warrior type build, but if you're doing a battle mage, obviously your intelligence needs to be up as well as your endurance and your dexterity. Reason being is you'll need to be able to handle the armor and weapons you're trying to hold if you're doing a battle mage, right? Arcane is about the last thing and arcane is important, but it's not as important as the rest of them you can put up arcane sparingly or not at all depending on what you want to go for i didn't really want to do anything with arcane there is one weapon that you do get from a boss that does require arcane i think it requires about 25 arcane and to me that's a lot of arcane right the reason i'm even at 20 arcane is because i was trying to do something and now i'm looking at it and if I was to start over, I would have never touched Arcane because it doesn't really help with what I was actually trying to build. There is also this thing called Poise, which also helps you with being able to withstand blows and prevent you from being knocked down by certain enemies. This is why it's important to know what you're doing from the beginning because you get Poise from certain armor you're wearing. So as you can see, I'm just running through the list of things I can upgrade considering I have 5 million runes right now. And that's just based off a little bit of farming I've been doing. You get a lot more runes if you're obviously if you're farming, but as well as if you're doing new game plus. So one day I actually did new game plus farming and I got about 20 million runes and I probably was doing it for maybe two, three hours. Not too sure. And it's all runes. But at the same time, when each upgrade costs a million or almost a million, it's it's kind of like you need you need that. You need that amount of runes at that point. That's what New Game Plus comes in handy for. Because nothing else really changes in New Game Plus. But that being said, if you just take a look at the things that I've put some of the runes into, you can see what has gone up. And as well as like when I attack enemies, it can go from a couple hits or it could go to one hit. Like I can start one hitting people now right because i put so many stats into the things that matter especially if you look when i do the blue stuff here if you see that when i put up let's say faith when i put up faith you can also see that my armaments go up as well because they require a little bit of faith or they require a little bit of intelligence or whatever the case may be right because that makes that weapon stronger so if you're upgrading in my case, faith and strength, that makes this weapon stronger, right? So every time I do one or the other, this weapon gets stronger. And then I can start sweeping these guys very easily. Or the fact that I don't even need to swing it multiple times. But I like to, because it looks cool. So just in case you did miss what I was talking about, I'm going to pull it back up. And then you can see, like, let's say if I put up the strength here, once I put up strength, you will see that a lot of my armaments also go up versus if I put up, say, like endurance. Endurance helps with my equipment load. My equipment load goes all the way up. See, but if I put up strength, my strength goes up for multiple weapons, right? And same thing with my dexterity. Dexterity 
and faith will increase how much attack power I have for these set weapons because they require all these things, right? And if I put up intelligence, my one magic weapon I have will go up, but not necessarily the other ones I have. So the next thing is there are actually money runes you can pick up various places around the Elden Ring world. But what there is not plentiful of are great runes. Now, great runes are runes you get by defeating bosses. But here's the thing. They're not activated until you find the tower for them. So once you find the tower, you must go collect it. And then you can use the great rune which will boost your stats. So it could be any, almost any kind of stats, or there's a different, I would say there's a different variation between the ones that you collect, right? And depending on what you're building, it all depends on what you want to use the runes for. So there are some that boost magical abilities or some that boost all your stats by let's say 5% or more, right? So that one is, I believe that's the Godric great rune that boosts all your stats. But when you equip them, you need to activate them by using a rune arc, which you can buy rune arcs or you can collect them around the world. It's about the same. So once you've collected a rune arc, you then use it to enable that ability. But once you die in your game, that rune arc is gone. The nice thing about joining another player is when you die, you keep all your runes, uh, your money runes, and your rune arc is still activated. So you don't have to worry about that. It's only when you die in your game. I know there's a lot. It's a little complicated, but we're not worried about that. We're just worrying about the basics. That's just a little information to give you to tell you that there's things you will collect that you might not know what the meaning of them are in the beginning, but I'm just giving you a little bit of information. Another thing you might collect around the world is ball bearings. So ball bearings, when you have access to the round table there's the twins you can give them ball bearings and then you can buy these things in the store so sometimes kill an npc you get access to these things or you can just find them in various locations like the smithing stones and, and stuff like that i will put a video link to the best possible videos that will help you throughout this game and that will be able to help you find these things because they've cumulated these and there are some really good ones that will show you everything you need to go collect these things this game has a lot of vast range of freedom so you can basically go anywhere you want and kind of do anything you want but be cautious especially if you want to just fight a random npc in your game that's not out to kill you so these are the ones that you could just talk to and they'll give you a side mission or like have a store you could buy things from these ones if you kill them too early you, you kind of lose side missions and uh, ultimately you probably lose endings to the game which there's i believe there's about five or six endings if you happen to start a fight with the npc and you want to then go back and talk to the npc you could actually head to the church of vows and if you have a celestial do you can actually ask for forgiveness at this statue another thing about the uh, church of vows if you come here and talk to this turtle and you give if you give the turtle your prayer books that you've been picking up around the world they will actually give you some new spells you could purchase. Of course, it's all dependent on your class if you care about that or not. Another nice feature about this game are spirits slash summons. So with these, if you have this box, you can actually summon these spirits and you can upgrade them with the, the girl at the round table hold. Now, the nice thing about spirits is you can actually send them out and do battle for you. But the bad thing is they don't work in every area. If they did, it would be amazing because there's some areas that are more difficult than others. And it would be kind of clutch to have them in those areas. So, you know, you can easily like avoid enemies or, you know, actually have a chance to fight them. You never know. Maybe the new update will allow us to do that. But until then, this is what we have. And it's pretty dope in the areas it does work in. Come on, from Make it so. Make it so. <laughs> in all realness, pretty nice when you want to just uh, head into a boss fight without worrying about summoning somebody else. Okay, and now we have maps. The maps are, or the fragments of the maps are scattered all over the Elden Ring world. And what you need to do, you need to go to these uh, posts and pick them up. Once you do that, you'll have that portion of the map. There's quite a few map pieces and the map itself is massive as well as there are underground maps. Now I'll show you a little glimpse here of what the maps are. If you don't wanna 
see them you could skip past this part but this is the maps this is this is the whole map right now i'm on new game plus i don't have all the graces i had when i began i don't have all the graces anymore once you do new game plus all your graces re will reset and here's the thing about new game plus i recommend you actually beat the game with just one go don't worry about exploring and then do the new game plus because it's a little bit more rewarding when you like you're not as weak and you get to actually explore these other parts of the game and it's pretty easy to go back to the training ground once you talk to whiteface vari again it's in the same place you talk to him at the first steps then you meet him at the, the church and he'll give you the mission again because it's a little bit more fun that way i find it a little funner when i come across enemies that in the past i would just like run by but now i'm just like you know what let's fight they're still <laughs> they're still out to kill you so just keep that in mind they're not gonna hold back but at least hopefully this time you're able to you know stand your ground and kick some ass so as of the recording of this video there is a rumor dlc coming out it's supposed to come out in february and if that's the case of course i'll be doing videos on that new dlc uh so come back to the channel if you're down for that if not thanks for watching this video at least the one thing i'm hoping is the original game gets improved upon so i'm hoping they add more addition to the map especially the underground map that i was mentioning maybe they're going to expand on that as well as introduce new bosses new items so like in the like i never played the dark souls 3 game but i was told that they added so many other things to new game plus so hopefully with this dlc they're gonna add so many stuff as well as another storyline which would be dope if you can get a friend to join with you with this game I really recommend that because I'm having the most fun. Like, don't get me wrong. I enjoyed the game. I play it on my own, but I'm having so much more fun when I'm in a match with my friend, we get invaded and we, we kick some ass. Or <laughs> there's been times where I'm in his game and he gets wrecked by the invader and it's just hilarious. And like I said, if I find any videos that complement this one, I will be linking them in the description. I've come across a video that actually gives you the location of the, all the ball bearings and some of the ones for the, the grave ghosts ball bearings and if you're looking to upgrade certain things these will come in handy and you you won't have to be digging around the internet to find these things i'll just link them if i can find them again uh, if not and unfortunately you will have to look for it but hopefully i can link everything i'm thinking about adding and you'll be able to just simply click and open a couple tabs and save them if you need to and if not you can always remember to come back to this video and they'll be here all right people thanks for watching hopefully i covered everything in this video if there's anything i left out please leave a comment all right that's it have a good one